showing the awesome behind the scenes of Comic Sans, so we can show a bit of, no one's making faces at us right now, this is very easy. Um, but we're going to show you a bit about how it was made, uh, and it was also made on a train by everybody sitting next to me, John Beach, and hey, Alex yeah. Perry, and Ed Hargrave, oh. and uh, it was made from Chicago to San Francisco on a train, which is not super easy. Not when you've got a dev kit and TVs, well, four dev kits, yeah. four TVs, power supplies, network cables. It was, it was Take to the top of the train. train. It was quite something. Yeah, yeah. yeah using moves in bright sunlight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was quite. And the train was wobbling, and you were like, oh god, oh god, the whole time. So, yeah, <laughs> excuses, that was. Excuses, excuses. It yeah. was fine. It was absolutely <laughs> <laughs> whatever, fine. Whatever, whatever. Okay, so without further ado, for those who haven't seen uh, Comic Sans, we're going to dive in and just play through the level so you can see what it's Yeah, about. and quick before we do that, I just want to introduce. Again, Tom Dent, our amazing community manager, who is going to be on the stream uh, talking to all of you as John plays. And then at the end, we're going to be answering some questions uh, about creating gameplay and all that awesome stuff in Dreams. So, uh, and we'll just uh, do a playthrough. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, if you guys have questions, put them on the stream. We've already got some that we got off Twitter and stuff, so we try and answer as many as we can. Okay, so here we go. This is the game's come to play mode. And our, our theme for the for the uh, train jam was Odyssey. Like going on some kind of journey. We wanted to go on a journey from 2D to something else that wasn't 2D. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Uh, and like us, it, it takes a, a journey to the desert. Certain yeah, 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 just yeah. like us. Yeah. Yeah, we were certainly inspired by what was going by the train. Did we see we saw yeah. a lot more snow than, yeah. than yeah. you would think by watching this. <laughs> Actually, we didn't see many cactuses, did we? We just saw sand. Tans, mostly sand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sand because also sand. the giant pencil that went past the train as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the giant <laughs> sock puppet. <laughs> <and> sock puppet. <laughs> so that, that sock puppet is actually a sock puppet of our friend Dan Castro, who uh, couldn't make it onto the train with us, so we, we made a sock puppet. It's not like we left him in Chicago. Well, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we made, we made an IRL sub puppet and then an in-game sub puppet as well. <laughs> so three, why not? Three versions of that. Three versions. Oh, wait, what? Wow. some behind the scenes so the best way to do that is we just jump straight back to the beginning and then I'm just going to pause it sometimes pause like this and we're going to go into edit mode you can see we've got some gadgets here we've got a timeline which is controlling the animation of this pencil we've got this light here that's lighting stuff up but I'm just going to hide those just for a second or unhide those ones and you'll see that if I pull the camera back out that it's all a lie what? <laughs> oh my it's a massive lie it's a massive lie so you can see that's how we did the, uh, the effects of the frame. So I'm going to jump right into play mode for you and carry on a bit more. There's our little character. Uh, I'll jump across into the next scene. Here we go. I'm going to pause it again now. And I can pull, pull the camera out. And you can see where we've come from. We came from that frame over there. And we moved across into this frame just with a camera cut. Cool. And this is how we achieved the illusion of and when I say illusion, I mean it kind of is 2D. Kind of is 2D it's kind yeah. of is 2D. Because, you know, if we pan through here, you can see stuff is 2D. But when you look at it at different angles, it all becomes like a little bit wonky. But when you see it from just the right angle, it's super cool in 3D. And you can see this is how we did this transition here. Because I'm about to transition. And actually, if you, for the eagle-eyed among you, if you watch in the bottom right-hand corner, you see this little bit of the transition. We, were, we only had 52 hours to do this. And there it is! Oh no! Literally unplayable. Now, this one, you can see the frame moves, right? The way we did this one. I think the frame is moving with a character, but it's hard to picture that without actually seeing it from this point of view. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the gadgets back on. See the gadgets around. And the gadgets are what we use to create the logic. And I'm going to get the camera here. When I look in the camera, this is the camera that we're looking for at the moment, right? But I can just grab the camera, move it, and 
just going to move it over here somewhere so we can throw it. We can see it from this point of view, right? And back to demo. And now you can see the camera was really just following the player, and then that frame is stuck to the player. In fact, I even think if I play camera a little bit further, I might even be able to uh, get the camera itself and bring it out into the world. So you frame that camera and jump back into the table. And now you can see it in that kind of view. So that's how that was happening. And so that's some of the gadgets we use in there. We've got a follower that's following the player. I've got some sort of dampening and stuff so it's going to follow it. Instantaneously, it's a bit flag to give that some smooth, smooth motion. And you can decide what the follower decides to, to, to follow. To follow, right? absolutely. So you can follow the character all the way. That's cool. Let's move on. This is just physics. Let me fall down here. In that bit there, you saw these little bits here break away, and they just moved because of this timeline. So in the timeline, you can animate things, and then I just put all the animation of these breaking onto this timeline, and then this wire just plays this timeline. And you may be thinking, oh, what's making that wire, you know, turn on in the first place? Well, I certainly was. <laughs> so if we go into this here, we can actually see a trigger zone, and the trigger zone is just looking for the player. So when the player gets into this zone, will activate this timer which will activate some of these other things you see. So trigger zones are really, really important in dreams because they're the things you use most of the time to activate stuff right and there's a bigger trigger zone that so when I fell through this hole and I went into this next bit and it says turn the camera on. A bit louder. Cost be louder, more. John. Be louder. <laughs> Apparently I'm too quiet. None of you guys louder. can hear me. I thought I had quite a loud voice. I, I, apparently I've got to talk about that. Shower. 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 I think it turned into a really aggressive yeah. <laughs> Trigger zone! Trigger zone! Very important! So now our character has legs. We don't have a name for our character actually, do we? Uh, stream, maybe. Stream, yeah, you guys, by the end, come up with a name. <laughs> do our jobs! <laughs> we can't think of something yeah. else. That's also how this game got named. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's actually. The power of Twitter. So now we have some legs on the character. And that's done with our stop frame animation. And the way all these lines and stuff are drawn in the background, and especially those birds, courtesy of Abby, are drawn, is with stop frame animation. So you can draw one frame, then draw the next, and draw the next, and get animation that way. There are just three lines that go like that. It was so simple. And here we have a sock puppet again, and the sock puppet, once again, just jump out into mode, and you can see it's just. <laughs> in front of the frame here like this. In fact, if I just let time run while in this mode, you can see, see it's moving around. Did you give it armholes in case it ever grew arms? Yes. Yes. <laughs> just curious. Because the shirt had armholes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, no. yeah, we took it off of a bear. <laughs> yeah, poor That's bear. Poor bear. Yeah. Thank you All right, for the context. <laughs> poor armless bear. But I like that animation because you can see where you literally grabbed the puppet and yeah, started yeah, moving yeah, around yeah, the controls. Just, just moved it around, exactly. And this bit, again, is the illusion of jumping into different frames. So we'll just get back in. You can see, ah, there's a secret line behind, which is just... You're muttering again. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> smoke and mirrors is a line. I do tend to mutter, <laughs> sorry. Just keep, keep shouting at me if I mutter too much. And this is a bit that everyone seems to like. So when you go from this side over to this side, it turns into 3D. And once more, back into edit mode, and you can see how it really is just 3D, and I've come from over here. But what was mental was if you go back and look through it through this frame, you can actually see all the 3D stuff there. So we had to hide all of this 3D until we crossed this line here. How'd you do that? Uh, we have this uh, whole thing here is put as one group. So I grouped it all together, which means I can delete it or move it around as one big group. And it just happens to have a tweak on it called invisibility, whether it's visible or not. So I just plug this wire into the power of this group and turn this group on and off. Really, really simple. So powering a group actually makes it visible. When you take the power yep. away from the group, it goes away. Absolutely, right. yeah. Can you do it again? Just to... I think if we go left or right now, you can see, you can see oh, how right. this yeah, it's, it's, it's got yeah, the... Once it's been powered on, Once it's been on, powered right? on, yeah, I didn't, because, yeah. you know, 
these are all like bugs. If we were making a full time game, we would actually like refresh these, but we knew this was going to be like a one off and we could play through and I could play it. And once properly. again, we had 52 hours <laughs> on a train. Because <laughs> you know, I can, I can run this way, this is all, you know, I shouldn't be going over here. No, we knew of course we you should. Should. Yeah, no, explore, right. explore that as so yeah, that's that's like I mean, some we of the, make the rules as the game. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's just some of like the behind the scenes stuff. But what I want to show you guys first before we delve into some of the more complex stuff that we we did in Comic Sans, I want to sort of start from more of the basic and just show you some of like our basic logic that we have and how we use that to make gameplay and levels and stuff like that. So I'm going to leave Comic Sans for now. Bye, Bye Comic Sans. Bye Comic Sans. Hardly knew you. <laughs> And all I'm going to do is create something brand new. And I'm going to go over to our MM game stuff here. And there's some handy things that I can remix. I'm going to remix this level called Let's Create. And remix. And that loads us straight into this level. A remixed version of that A level. A remixed version of the level. That <laughs> looks like someone's already been working in here. <gasps> Who's been working in here? It's fine, okay. I'm going to leave this one because there's too much stuff. I don't like all this stuff. So I need something that's a bit more plain, so we'll here. How about this one, snow? It does, it does seem thematically desert. appropriate with Strange Jam. Oh, no, does it? Because sand. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Sand. Right. that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Cool, here's, some, here's a nice desert scene that we have. Some cool lighting and things. But what I want to show you is how we can use this to make uh, some gameplay and use logic to do that. So the first thing we need to do really is add a character so we can run around and add gameplay for the character. So let's add debug. <gasps> Can't go far from the future. So the reason that happened, just to explain to you guys, is because we're working on a dev cycle. We have different builds of the game, and if someone ever makes anything on a, a later version, we can't load it in the past, and the one we use for the stream is our stable version, which is always about a week behind, so yeah. we can't load exactly mm -hmm. in the future. You guys will never have to worry about that, yeah, yeah. that will Let's... never happen to you, that's just... Uh, uh, Unless you travel to the future, it never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so confusing. There's version in there. Build a time There's machine. Dev trouble. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, don't build a time machine. Please don't build a time machine. <laughs> Maybe build, build a time make machine. Make the game very Which confusing. one are we going to go for? This one? The debug yeah. puppet? <gasps> that's this also one well. from the future. Oh, no. Okay, let's try uh, another character over here. Let's try uh, Francis. There we go. There we go. go. Got Francis. a working. Okay, so Francis. Damn the future. Damn the future. It's and good that someone's, someone's been improving. Things are happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People working on our yeah. stuff. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the game's been made. <laughs> this is cool. We have Francis. Francis can run around. And you guys have probably all seen Francis, but this has some cool hammer attacks. Jump and slam down. But there's not much gameplay going on at the moment, so we want to add some cool gameplay. So we're going to jump back into edit mode, and we're going to build some gameplay. So I can add uh, elements from our little collection here to start building out a bit of gameplay. And I always like just using a nice path, because it makes it very clear where we're trying to get to what we're doing. Somebody using the walking in sand too. Yeah, well, it's really hard walking in sand. Especially if you're a bear. <laughs> And imagine if the, like the natural is. environment yeah. up there. <laughs> the yeah. When the ground is really hot, you know, that sort of like burning heat and it's like you burn your toes. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't want any of that. Okay, so I'm going to build a bit of a ground here and then we're going to go upwards here like this. So there's going to be like a, a jump we've got to get up, which would be too high for Francis on her own. <laughs> There's a road outside our office. If you guys heard that uh, honking horn, it is home time for a lot of people. Okay, and one more under here. Angry honky people. badgers. <laughs> okay, so there's our bit of gameplay. Francis has got to run across here and then jump up here. So let's see how well she does at the moment. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. It's just a bit too high. Can't get up there. Okay, so we need something to get us up there, and this is where logic comes in. And there's a few ways we can do this. Uh, one thing that I think you guys have seen on a stream before is something along the lines of just using the action recorder. Wow. So, a time back to the beginning, I'm going to pull out my action recorder, and I can just grab this platform, and I can move it up, and I can then move it back down, and we can stop recording. And when Francis jumps back into the level, we've got a little moving platform that goes up and down. 
which is, you know, it's a really nice way of doing it. But it's not really logic, you know, it's just like a continual animation. So we want to make this more interactive. That's what I'm going to do this time. I am going to use the action recorder. I'm going to use it to record me making a, essentially a bounce back. So I'm going to flick a bit of ground up into the air like this. So, and like that. Okay. Now if we press play, you can see it flicking up and down. But again, it's just an animation for land on here, so you can press me higher. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. That's fine. Great, so we've built a little bounce pad. But again, it's still not interactive, so this is where we're going to use the logic to now make this fully interactive. Now, I've opened up the tweak menu here of the action recorder. And I'm just going to increase the playback speed a little bit, which will have the effect of making the bounce pad bounce me higher because it's not because it only just got me up there, so I'm going to go up a little bit higher. Then we're going to go into our components, and this is where all our logic lives. So we've got uh, stuff we've already used in the scene, sensors and inputs, and these things usually happen first. We go into logical processing, which is the stuff that kind of happens in the middle, and then we have outputs, which is the stuff that happens at the end. You know, it's like a sort of sum, it's this plus this equals this, and a few other things. But for now, I want a sensor and input. This is usually the thing you have at the start of the chain. And I'm going to have a trigger set. And we have loads of inputs here, you can have a little more. But I just want a trigger set. So at the moment it's circular, which is kind of okay, but actually I want it to match the shape of this bounce pad. So if we open up the trigger zones internal here, we have all these different options on it, different pages of options. All I want to do is turn it square and change the size of it now. And then I'm going to grab a wire out of this detector tab. And all the gadgets have like inputs and outputs that you can wire to and from. And in fact, what's really cool in Dreams, because this is what we do in Little Big Planet, if you guys have ever out there played Little Big Planet, we've done something extra. And you can wire out of pretty much everything that's on the tweak menu into anything else as well. So you can wire out from the number required into something else, you know, like you can even wire it back into itself. Not that would make any sense. Yeah. So, you know, if you've got well, any you other can, stuff, you can. That's it, yeah. And the cool thing is, we think you guys will like start figuring out really clever ways of wiring tweak menus into other tweak yeah. menus to like get what you want. Say like you could choose the color of this character equals the color of this light, because you can drag out the wire from the color. So you know, that's a really cool way of making logic. But for now, all I've done is wire the trigger zone into this action recorder. I'm going to change the action recorder from loop into play once. So this should have the effect of when I jump into this little zone, it will trigger this bounce pad. So let's jump in there. There we go. And so we've made already a nice simple bounce pad. Just with two gadgets. What I think is really neat as well is that we use the little power button as, as both the sort of bypass but also the input port. Yeah. So if you're ever like wondering how to make something work, nine point. Nine, nine times out of ten, it's always going to be the little power button at the yeah, bottom. Yeah. So you don't really have to think too hard about it. You just go straight into that one that's exposed on, on the tile there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, if you want more complex behaviours, you may want to wire it into just the amp amplification or the playback speed or mm. the wobble of the thing. But generally, a good rule of thumb is the output into the power. Okay, what else do we need? Uh, I think a sound effect would be cool to add on here. So let's go up to our. Uh, mode here, we can go to sound mode, and we can go add sound effect. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! We've been working on the sounds! <laughs> Someone's been working on the sounds, mm, okay, so, so what's really cool is, uh, I was going to like just add a pre-made sound that you know, Ed made know, built kind of earlier, gonna do now. but now we're going to just record a brand new sound. So <laughs> I'm going to use you guys to record it, and what we want is like... I a, feel like Ed ruined it, we should make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's <laughs> yes, Ed, it's all yeah. you. Okay, so I'm going to get the uh, sound recorder here. And then when I stamp it into the world, it should start recording. Does this, uh, is this the camera on? Should we do a test? Should we do a test? Okay, I'll yeah. down. Test, 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 testing. Test, test. Uh, Ooh, I uh, I'm just going to plug the camera yeah, yeah, in, guys. Ed, you take control for right, a second okay. while I plug the camera in. So to get the, the microphone, we need like a microphone. And most of the times, we just use the PlayStation camera. Uh, look. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, it looks like it's in. No, the light's not on on the camera. It's in. 
Okay, give it a go then, it might just be a go. Give it a go. Boop, boop, boop. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although, great sound. Yeah, yeah great sound. Really For a bounce pad, you know. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. This is a shame. This was working yesterday when I when I rehearsed this stream. I just want to point out. <laughs> well, I can't, um, we haven't got audio on this telly, but if we go boing. Um, oh, hang on. Sorry. It, it's, it's not recording. The camera's no, not. not the camera's not on this, there would be a light on Mine it. On that. Okay, we can Disaster. Uh, we can find sounds though from the um, from the Dreamiverse. Oh, can you? Okay, mm -hmm. well that's exciting. There's a workaround. There's a workaround. So if you go into Dreamiverse and then you just show filters and then sound effects, we could find something that already has been published. So if we go text search, maybe like a whoosh. It's a risky business. Um, we'll go for that one. Now, interestingly, we don't have sound on the TV, no. so we, we can't actually hear what any of these sounds are, because we can preview them, but we don't actually know what it sounds like. I know one that I did yesterday was um, Magical Pop sounded. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Well, I'm going to go with Beefy Whoosh. Beefy Whoosh. <laughs> there we go. Now, the thing is, we, none of us here know what this sounds like, no. so Beefy Whoosh could be like... I can only imagine. Whoosh. Oh, like, whoosh. Is that close? Is that close? Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, Costa's... Oh, Costa's oh, turning right. the sound up for us, so we, can, we might be able to hear it. That's all right. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's, no, fine. That's, that's good. There that you go. Beefy, beefy Whoosh. So you can, you can see, as John was opening the... Uh, beefy Whoosh is my DJ name. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good thing. Oh, uh, it's all been around. <laughs> so everything can be tweaked in Dreams. Um, we were looking at the Trigger Zone tweaks before. We're not going to go into too much detail of the sound effects, but you can see these are, these are the, the tweaks that you get for the sound. Um, and just as John had triggered the animation, I'm going to just simply trigger that sound and make sure it's set to play once. Okay. And that's probably all we need for that, really. Give it a, go. Give it a test. <laughs> Yay. There we go. There you go Pretty cool. Okay, so that's how we've added the sound, and you guys could have recorded your own sound or found a really awesome sound that someone else has made or that we've provided for you guys. Uh, what else do I need? I know what we should add. Some sort of special effect when we sort of get bounced into the air, right? Fire. So, like, fire. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no. Okay. I was thinking Not like fire. Sort of, I was thinking like magical like fire. particle. No. Magical <laughs> fire. <laughs> okay, so These girls just want to burn everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we can have we can have magical sparks or whatever. Alright, sparkles, <clears throat> sparkles, so, glitter. I fine. love sparkles. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> so I've come into uh, um, What's uh, this tool called? This is called paint mode, right? right? And so I can just paint stuff into the air like this. This is actually how we did the lines in uh, Train Jam and uh, on Comic Simons. I'll show you guys later how And the legs of the character. And the legs right? of the yeah. character, yeah, right? absolutely. So what I want is uh, to use one of the... This has its own sort of set of tools, and one of them is a line tool. So I can just draw nice straight lines up like this. There we go. And I've just drawn one line into the air, and that's all I want for now. And I'm going to turn off the... Uh, uh, we have all these different filters here as well, guys, to hide various things. So I just want to hide the trigger zones because I don't need to see those anymore. And then we'll just go straighten this line up a little bit. And then go into its tweak menu. And everything has its own tweak menu with its own various properties. And the first thing I want to do is turn it into a sort of more magical colour, so like a sort of uh, purpley, pinky colour, because that's super magical. And tint that up so you can see it perfectly pink, and then make it glow because that's magical. <laughs> and then I'm going to increase the animation speed a bit. Now, what that does is means the particles will sort of move down the length a bit. You can just about see it sort of scrolling along. So if I make it into a pulse, you can see it really scrolling along like that. I'll make the speed faster and shorten the trail. But there's only one at the moment, so we need like a whole load to make it look like super it magical, definitely. right? So on page five, we can say duplicate inside a little area Whoa. like this, and we can change all the sort of oh, how many how many copies there are. The sort of all kinds of different options. And I'm just going to make that about the size of the bounce pad. And the last thing is I'm just going to make them fade in and fade out, so it looks sort of nice and magical, right? It's pretty cool. And I can pause time. And we can just drag and move that into the exact right place we want it. So right on the bounce pad here. And what I want to do is when you land on the bounce pad, I want them to like appear but then fade out. So we need to do like a sort of slightly more complex bit of logic now. And I'm going to use the logic and processing section. 
So if you just plugged into it now, they would just uh, yeah. suddenly... They'd just sort of suddenly turn on when I was inside the trigger zone right. and then turn off out, so, so they wouldn't look particularly cool. So what I want to do is, now I know I'm going to do some, like a bit of logic that's slightly more complex, I need to make it nice and neat. So I'm going to use one of our gadgets here called the microchip. If you guys are familiar with LBP, you know what that is, but it's basically somewhere that can store all your sort of logic. So I'm just going to stick that here so I remember where it is. I can open this up, I think, it's going to be my time. It's got the old controls. Yeah, that's mm, that's good. Good. <laughs> wow, how old is this How old build? is this build? <laughs> <laughs> this is a really, really old build. So uh, we changed the, the buttons for that probably like about three weeks ago, so that, that confused me. Um, <clears throat> so what I can do, what's really cool, is I can stick the action recorder in here. I can even stick the trigger zone. Now the trigger zone has a trigger zone where the trigger zone gadget is. In fact, if I turn uh, the trigger zones on, just so you can see this, because this is really cool. When I move this gadget, you'll see the trigger zone moves with it, which is great. But if I stick it on to a microchip without letting go, it remembers where it was, which is really, really nice. And you can see the little circle that it's pointing to yeah. when you exactly. hover over it. When you hover over it, yeah. Awesome. yeah. So you can still reposition it. I can still reposition yeah. it like so. And then I've got this uh, sound effect as well, which I'll stick on here to keep it nice and neat. So now all the logic for that is contained on this microchip. But like I said, I want to make these particles fade in and fade out. And one of my absolute favourite gadgets, which I know the audio department use a lot as well, is our signal manipulator over here. Now, what a signal manipulator does is allow you to manipulate signals, funny enough, but in a whole load of cool ways. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, we, we try and name things sensibly so you guys can sort of get yeah. an idea. But on this, I'm just going to have smoothing only, uh, so not smoothing only, uh, pulse when input goes on, which means when I go into the trigger zone, this thing is going to give me a pulse. And I control how long that pulse lasts by this. So this one is how fast that pulse goes up. I want it to go up instantly, I want like, particles to appear straight away. But then I want to take it like, you know, maybe a second for them to disappear, so it's like, phew, and then they fade down. So all I had to do was turn that up and click that on one. And now this one has an input and an output, so I can get the wire here from the uh, trigger zone. And I can open up the uh, tweak menu here of the, uh, the strokes, these particles, which also has a power. And I can just wire into the power there like that. <coughs> Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got some nice cool. particles. And so you can see how you can quickly start adding things to your, your level. And it doesn't have to be overly complicated, but you can go as complicated as you want, which is really cool. So these things you can keep adding to and piling on top of each other. I'm going to add a uh, camera to frame this now, because it would be really cool. There's a nice camera here. In fact, what I can do, this is, really, this is, a, this is a smart idea, you guys if you like making stuff modular this uh, microchip here I'm going to open up with the old controls and I'm going to stick a camera actually on this microchip so I can go here to cameras stick the camera on here and I can look through what the camera looks like let's get it to about like that. and then I want to add another trigger zone but this time a bit bigger to say when you're in this trigger zone I want this camera to be active so I can just copy this trigger zone, which is in the same place and the same size, but then by tweaking on it, I can just change the size of it like this. That bigger like that, bigger that way. And I kind of want it to match roughly what the camera was looking at, so I'm not going to be too precise, but I think it was, it was about a bit higher just in case I drop out the top. Close that one down, and wire that into That looks like. So when I go into this area, this trigger zone is going to be active, and I can see what this bounce pad looks like from that point of view. But now, what's really nice, now I've done this, I'm sort of happy with the. Um, look, actually, one last thing. Oh, I get so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Effects, we should have. It's okay, we, we were going to like, yeah, yeah. just let you do yeah, this, yeah. but now we're all fascinated, yeah, oh, yeah. so we're going to watch the whole thing. Uh, just to show you some, uh, you know, a few of the other gadgets, we've got a camera shaker, which is really nice, which shakes the camera right so if I preview it I can see what that looks like and I've got a bit of camera wobble what I want is a bit more speed like this <laughs> and now if I wire the uh, the same thing we used to make the particles come on I'm actually just going to wire that into the amount of shakiness and this is an example where we don't wire it into the power we, 
I'm just wiring it straight into the shakiness, which is like how shaky it is. So I want the speed, the vibration to be the same. So now, when I jump into this bounce pad, we get a bit of a screen shake as well. It's a nice bit of screen shake. Just sort of add that extra like oomph to it. Did you do this in Comic Sans when you're coming down with I the did. rocks? Yeah, yeah, whenever you landed down, it's exactly how I did it. The, the camera shaker is so good for this kind of thing. We even have one that's for setting off the rumble on your jewel shop as well, so you can make things rumble at the same time, which is really great for sort of immersive gameplay. Right, so now I have all my logic wrapped up here, and I also have my actual bounce pad. What I can do is I can group them together. It's going to hide the trigger zone, so we don't have to look at them anymore. I can select two things, and you can see it here, it says group. So I can group that, and now that camera, the trigger zone, all the logic, everything is contained within this, this single bounce pad now. I don't have to try and rebuild it every time that I'm doing a new bit of gameplay. So I can just get this, and I can put it up here. But it's disappeared because it's now... It's inside, inside the group, yeah. So I could, I could go inside, we have this concept of like tunnelling inside things. So if I tunnelled inside here, you would see, gotcha, the, there is. see the logic. So, let's jump back into play mode. I have two bounce pads, so we should have a camera for the first one. Bounce me into the air, and as I move, the camera for the second one will activate as well. So that's really nice. Okay then. And when you find yourself, you have like a cool motif like this, it's really nice to then build gameplay out really, really fast. So we can get this rock and we can start building like a little bit of a scene here. Really, really, really fast. I just, I just realised I buried Francis under the ground, <laughs> but it's fine. She'll be fine. She'll be fine, yeah. Let's go build like this. Let's clip around here like this. One thing you did mention about uh, microchips is that everything inside it gets, um, sort of inherits power from the fact that the microchip has power. So if you wanted to have some of these, maybe that you had to find a switch to activate uh, bounce pads, mm -hmm. you could just turn it off with that one button, right? Absolutely, so you can turn off all of your logic in, in one go, you don't have to turn all the bits off individually, which is really nice for sort of blocking out and making game pay really fast. Okay, so we've got these all these bounce pads now, let's see how that works. This may or may oh, not... No, Francis is in the wrong... Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. So, there we go. Hopefully the cameras will be able to uh, keep up with us, here we go. Ooh. Yay. <laughs> now what I realised then for the eagle-eyed amongst you, and you'll probably point this out at the end of the stream, so I'm going to point it out first, was that the uh, special effect that we had is on this first one, but it's not on the others because when I grouped it, I only grouped the microchip oh, and the board. Effect. I was going to point that out a couple of minutes ago and I didn't, I feel so dumb now. Oh no. So there we go, so now I haven't got that effect. So I could go back and I could replace them all, but oh, I could see Nah. You, guys, you guys get the idea. Um, so that's like how we, how you can use logic to do simple bits of gameplay like this. And the last thing, we're probably, what time, how much time have we got left on the stream, guys? We've got 20 minutes left. Okay, that's cool. So I'm going to make a few more bits of like logic in here. Then we're going to go back to, no, actually, because we want to answer some questions. I'm going to go back into Comic Sans now, show you a bit of the sort of behind the scene logic in that. And then we'll have like the last 10 minutes to questions from the community. Cool. Sounds great. Okay, let's leave this in. Do I want to save it? <laughs> it wasn't that good. Okay, so I'm just going to search for Comic Sans again. Thank you, Twitter, for that awesome name. Have they, Tom, have they named our character yet? Oh, um, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet, not yet. Okay. Still up for grabs. <clears throat> if anybody wants to name the Comic Sans character. So we have our character, and what you guys have noticed uh, when we've been playing this through is the... Oh! oh. oh no TV! <laughs> oh, the monster has turned that TV off! That's the end! Hopefully you guys can stay safe. minds are next to each other. <laughs> Bear with us. Yeah. Here, this would be a great time to answer a question from the Yeah, go for it. That'd be awesome. Is it possible to launch a dream with the imp already controlling a character? Absolutely. And in fact, Comic Sans does just that. So... <gasps> Amazing, that works really well. Can we paint in air without a 3D shape underneath with color or light? Absolutely, and I did that just earlier on the when I made the special <laughs> effect, so yeah. Yeah. What do you mean by um, air, sorry? You know, just draw into the air, which oh, I, I, I was doing yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I made it colorful and 
it's part of me. So, you know, so how do you draw air? That's really tricky. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can, I can show you. Um, if I was animating a character, but then I updated the character to be more detailed, would I be able to swap out the two models, or at least save the animation performance on a microchip and put it on my new character manually? Absolutely. So what's really cool is any items you have, you can save as an individual creation, and it goes into its own level. And you can go into that level when you can you know, make your character more detailed, improve the animations, change its colour. When you go back into any level that it's used in, you can just update it and you can get it like, propagated out to everyone. So if you've made something and you've shared it with the community, say it's a tree, but then you suddenly think, oh, I know how to make this tree better, you make it better, everyone out there on the community can have your new updated version, which is super awesome. Okay then, so we're back at Comic Sans. Here we go. So let's go into TV edit mode. Back on. TV is back on. <laughs> We've had our, so many technical problems today. It's amazing. It's because it's, um, it's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> it's um, a beautiful day. It wants us to go yeah, outside. It's really sunny. I am going to draw straight into the air just to show you um, the question that was asked earlier. So I can draw into the air like this. And if I go into play mode, you can see that line is just like a straight line, whereas all the lines around are sort of wibbling and wobbling. Now the character when it moves and squishes and stretches was us doing like hand-drawn animation, but the stuff that's moving around the outside, we have a really cool tool for doing that, which is when you tweak it, you go onto uh, page six here, we have foil, and I can just turn that up and it just makes it wiggle. Which if you remember the uh, other game jam we did, we also Handyland. used Handyland. Um, yeah. Plug to Handyland. <laughs> That was us guys as well. It was. Plus Castro, Plus who's Castro now a sock. Plus sock <laughs> <laughs> He became a sock. He became a after sock. After that experience. <laughs> and I think, Ed, I think you said something about how can you draw air. Well, one cool thing you can well, do. Ed. <laughs> well, Ed. Well, Ed. One since cool you thing, asked. Since you asked. One cool thing you can do is something that happens in sort of nature is a zephyr, which is like when wind moves across the ground. Um, and I'm going to do like a sort of 2D approximation of that just by drawing a circle like this and then I'm swinging it around like that and then I can go into its properties and we can get it to animate just like I did with the special effects that you guys saw earlier I can say animate along its path do a pulse like this speed up that animation make it nice and fast hmm. maybe shorten its trailer a little bit and it could, that could boil as well right? that could, that could also boil yeah and I just make a, a whole load of them, but not too many because we don't want too many because that would just be absolutely insane. Silly. That'd be, that'd be silly. And there we go. It's like well, air. I'm, I'm glad I misinterpreted that question because now we've all learned something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to move on through the level a little bit until we get some more action and I can show you how we did the logic of that. So that little uh, tumbleweed that's rolling by, that was a cool little trick. So I actually go up to our filters here we can show all the invisible things in the level and this is where the level looks a bit mental but here you can see the ground that we're walking on is this big invisible platform and this tumbleweed is actually the tumbleweed drawing stuck to two blocks and this one is rotating around this one so if I press play you get to see it move and I just animated the back one moving just I grabbed it and kind of bounced in a cool kind of tumbleweed way ah, you can't see it in play mode I'm afraid you can get the idea that you can stick things to other things yeah. and then animate like the them separately. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Like the original thing, exactly. It's like you have to make a physical prop to make the thing. Like that. Yeah, really exactly. Cool. And this is just one way you can do it. This is just yeah. how we did it on Trade. Is the chromatic aberration on? Yes, it is. Absolutely. That's a good segue there, Abby. Mm -hmm. I like that. So we have um, gadgets that we can change the sort of sky and the filter, I think, I've put down here. Oh, that's good memory. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so this one here, the sun and sky. Does what you expect it to do. Oh, you want me to turn it off? Yes. Is what you're saying. <laughs> I see. Okay, so let's do that. So. Oh yeah, the menus might be looking weird because we have this grade effect on it. Yep, so yep. that's why they so look. So that's weird. this one, chromatic aberration, and what that Ooh. does is it splits out the RGB the closer it gets to the edge of the screen. We have loads of other cool ones as well, like VHS and posterized, so you guys will be able to make all your own like super cool effects. But Turn it off then. That's off. not off. Turn it off. <laughs> Turn it off. Um, but what's really cool is just like all the other things that you have inputs and outputs here. So while we're playing, you can say go into a trigger zone, and that makes your chromatic aberration yeah, turn yeah, up. Yeah. You know, because maybe you've like been hit by a debug missile. I don't know. Whatever. 
would make chromatic aberrations. That's happen. definitely what will happen. Yeah. That, is <laughs> that is definitely it. Really good way of doing like health effects. So like if you were losing health, you might want to reduce the colours or like make it all go red or something. Make Absolutely. it harder and harder to play. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We can yeah. change all the sort of you know sky here, so you know we can actually make the whole world look green. Let's make it look more sunsetty. There we go. The whole level has changed now completely. It's wow. somehow sinister. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> do a, do a frowny, now scary face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh no! It's very, it's very. I went, I went too red. Oh, no. We what couldn't have fire, but you can turn it into like a desert of blood. What Show have I, John. what have there. I done? Cool. And um, uh, what, uh, what other logic things are here that people would be interested in? Do you think? What, do you, what are you guys interested in? <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah, how about those collectibles? How did you make them sort of uh, ah, disappear? That's a good there question. we go. There you go. Ed's on it. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> You've really Sorry. redeemed yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so this collectible, uh, collector diamond, is um, if I is it done? Tunnel into it. It has a microchip on. And I open the microchip, and I have a feeling this microchip's going to be a bit messy. But I'm just going to show you again. Fifty-two yeah. hours on a train. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't trying to make it look neat. How many hours was it? Let's have a look inside. Oh, oh actually, it's not too bad. bad. It's not oh, too bad. I can probably fine. read that. Okay, so yeah. I, I, I indicate what these are. So here's the trigger zone, which says when the player gets close enough, I want you to count this counter up once, and this counter is set to only once. So it says like I'm definitely on now. And I've got a little signal manipulator which says start following the character. And the reason I use the signal manipulator is to smooth it in so the the mover doesn't just instantly go to the character. It kind oh, of so it builds kind of up speed. It has like a little acceleration. So you get that kind of flies whoop, towards you, yeah, yeah. Cool, you know, which is nice. Up here I have a uh, signal generator. What this does is a bit like a sort of, um, in fact, I open it up and you can get a good sort of example. At the bottom here, it generates a signal over time like this. So we're going on and off and on and off. And you can change how sort of wide they are, you know, and you can get a really cool graphical valuation here of what it looks like, you know, what you're trying to do. You can make Certain bits random. To see I've seen people use those to make like trees sway, yeah. look like it's going in the wind. Yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. It's a really cool way. It's to really work. great for generating like a, a random signal. What I was using it for was to make the little thing like bob up and down like this. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I was attach it to a mover here, and this mover has changed it to the forward speed, and so it's just bobbing up and down nicely. Now it's going to bob up and down completely randomly. So I collect it quickly before it flies off in space. So you can see it now bobbing up and down, but. Sometimes it bobs up a bit more than it bobs down. <laughs> I feel like we've gone into the shining somehow. <laughs> <laughs> should, I, should I change it back? No, this is great. Give us another look. It also know. makes Sockstro more sinister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sockstro. Change the whole mood. In fact, here's the um, animation of Sockstro. So if I, if, I, oops, if I go into it, I can just set it to record again or stop recording. And you can see the path that Sockstro took here. Nice. <laughs> and I just turn that off with a gadget. So it's really happy. That's a sort of handy effect when you, when something has been animated and you open that animation recorder and you can actually see the things that it's affecting so you yeah. get a quick exactly. idea of what's. Yeah, precisely. And to be honest, I think that's like that's about it for the logic really. I mean the character has like a whole load of logic. Which I'm kind of terrified to show you. Oh no, of course you Maybe I should. I think you guys have probably been excited to see it. Too. <laughs> At least a glimpse. At of least the, a glimpse. Yeah, so nice. a quick land. preview. So, yeah. yeah, I've tunneled in. Now, again, behind the scenes, literally. Here. The reason I've made it look complicated is I wasn't trying to neaten it up. Again, yeah, train. So let's open it up. So, <laughs> there is the logic of the character. Now, the reason there's so much logic is because the characters actually, that's three characters in one, don't forget. It's yeah. like, yeah. here's one character, here's the You've got, got the legs, 2D version, you've 2D got the version, legs version, you've got the 3D version. Yeah. version. And they I didn't bother to same. tidy up the wires or anything, yeah. so they all have the it's same logic insanity. And, yeah. But it's really cool because you can, you can go as complicated as you want and add what you want to make really, really yeah. cool things. And this is a great time for the question of how extensive will the built-in tutorials be? <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Abby! <laughs> um, we are, uh, you know, right now we are working on lots of tutorials and we'll also be doing plenty more like streams and how-tos and we know that a lot of those are also going to come from the community as well. But uh, wiki, tutorials, all that kind of stuff, uh, we'll have way more information on that later but we are going to be showing people how to do all sorts of awesome things in dreams. Definitely. And one thing to bear in mind is like this character I built completely 
like from scratch, from nothing yeah, at yeah. all. But we have loads of pre-made characters, puppets default and, puppets yeah. and stuff. So you guys won't have to do anything. You can just stick it down and it can run for your level. And you, and can, you can remix those characters can remix into them, yeah. stuff that looks like you want it to. And if totally. someone makes a really cool character with a bunch of default presets and stuff that work really well and they want to publish it, then you can use that and yeah. use it in your own levels yeah. and that kind of thing. We totally give this character away when it gets a name, you know, because everyone to yeah. use. Yeah, I mean, when somebody cool. names it. But if you don't name it, it stays as ours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So whoever, whoever gets to name it, like, gets to have it. Yeah. Yeah. If not, it's just, we're keeping it, no one gets to play it ever. Oh, this is moody. Wow, yeah, dark. There we go. But just from those, the bits you've shown us there, I can see how, like, you would hide uh, the 2D version and then show the 3D one. Exactly. And, like, it's all just pre-made bits that have yeah, been yeah. swapped around behind yeah, the scenes, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So there we go. Um, so I think we should just answer a load of questions and maybe we can do some demonstrations while answering them. Yeah, there's a few more questions left. Um, let's see. Will there be a way to parent objects together without using some equivalent of an LBP follower component? For example, if you need someone to hold something and then drop it. Yeah, we can definitely, we can definitely do that. Um, there's everything can be you can join things together you can glue things together you can stick them in the same group and they move together you can animate them together there's a whole load of ways of doing it it's like take your pick of the one which is most uh, suitable for you cool. uh, with emitters is there an option to change the object it emits automatically the tags or otherwise when I have a ton of emitters on the same object I want to update them all at the same time yeah so uh, <coughs> emitters can look for a thing to emit maybe it's a, a thing you've pre-built and it's in a different level and you can say I want to emit this or it's something that's already in your level and you can say emit this. So when you change it, all the other emitters will automatically change. Uh, Juvaza on Twitter has a question from his 11 year old son Logan. Will there be ragdoll physics in Dreams? Yes. What's really cool is the way our puppets work is actually just using the in-game joints. So I mean you could just joint a ragdoll and it would fall down. Yeah. But you can just turn off like the power to our puppet and it would turn into a ragdoll so it's really cool to so they call the puppet brain, and you just, just turn, turn the brain off. And, it and using that power <laughs> input that we showed you earlier, you could you could literally turn that on and off so that it was either a possessable puppet or a like a like a <laughs> yeah exactly yeah which is really cool. So you can make your character run into an electric fence and then just go yeah you know <laughs> like that yeah cool. Um, Will we be able to delete parts of an object, uh, just like in create mode, while controlling a character? Sort of like uh, the Worms games, or if a character is walking on snow and the feet and his feet are deleting the snow to leave footprints. Ah, so I think what they're asking is, can we do like the sculpting in create mode? I mean, we can delete any object uh, while in play mode, but uh, sculpting in play mode we don't currently have. Uh, it might be something we look mm -hmm. to do, but uh, not at the moment. Uh, those are all the questions that we had in advance. We may have a few more that come in uh, from the stream, and we'll do our best to answer those on uh, social media. And uh, yeah, is there anything else you wanted to show quickly? Or uh, I don't know, Tom. Have we got any questions? Tom's questions. Tom, Tom's waving. Tom, really? Tom, questions. I just spoke really? to Zoom right in. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> who were you zoomed in on? Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Are you all blurry? So I was just trying to. Oh, okay. trying to okay. oh yeah. No, oh, it's, 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 oh it's great. Yeah. <laughs> It was like super thanks to Costa for managing our stream today, except for that part when he turned off the television and we could see nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, can you make uh, the characters have to be asymmetrical to walk evenly, or can you create like a heavy, like a one sided, a one -sided character? character. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can create one sided characters. In fact, should I just, um, should I just? Yeah, let's just do it. Let's just make a Why not? Okay, so I've, I've jumped into a completely blank level here, and I've got a. Puppet, which is say can't look oh! <laughs> on next month's stream. <laughs> um, but basically, the answer is yes. You could make a character that's kind of like limping around one side, so they don't have to be uh, symmetrical. Cool. Uh, and it looks like for next month's stream, we're going to do a focus on audio, uh, which will be really exciting. So uh, Ed, like, Ed will be in charge. Yeah, it's like <laughs> no, 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 no. audio team. Absolutely. Yeah, team. Submissions for a name for the character. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's get our character name submissions. So we have Nate the Crate. Nate oh, the Crate. Yeah, cool. okay. uh, Surprised I didn't go with Kratos, considering that we're with uh, uh, God of War is coming out. Yes. Uh, Sandy Blue Pants. Sandy, Sandy Blue Pants. pants. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Big fan. I like the way you read them out to us so they actually get to see our reactions. So when we go, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I like this one. It sounds like a superhero. Chip Micro. Chip, Chip, Chip Micro. micro. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It does sound like a superhero. Yeah. 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 Uh, Walkus. <laughs> also yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sandbox. 
Sand box. Winner. Winner. All right, the winner is Alan. And then the final one is Alan. I like Alan. Well, I mean, yeah. I like Alan's, 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 Alan's a good call, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, yeah, after you guys. You know, All right, thank you. Those are amazing. Uh, we'll let you know what we... What, did we decide on one? Did we... Did what, just, uh, oh, yeah. wait, I, I, yeah. What was the... What, oh, the hand, hand what did we like before that? Sandbox. Sandbox. Sandbox is pretty great. Yeah, we got sandbox. 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 Is that for Alan? <laughs> <laughs> Alan's his middle name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sandbox. Alan. Sand Alan. Alan Box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. Do we have any other logic based questions? <laughs> uh, burning desires for people out there? What I'm going to do is that I'm just going to hover over some. See if you can guess what these gadgets are from the icons look. Ooh, what's that? Ooh, what's a door? Ooh, <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Ooh, what do you think this is? Ooh, rocket rotator. Destroyer, that's exciting. That's a good one. Health modifier. Ooh, Ooh. modifier health. Oh, I could do one of them. Secrets. They're not really secrets. <laughs> Exor gates. Yes. Exclusive gate. That's an exclusive view, right? You know, there. you're just setting yourself <laughs> up for what you're going to have to do on the yeah, screen yeah, in the future. Yeah. So yeah, now your true. challenge is to go oh. and figure out a demo that incorporates everything you just talked about on the oh. stream. So John's going to get working on that. <laughs> We're going to work on an audio stream for next month. Yep. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. Yeah. Uh, this was super fun. And uh, join us again uh, when we put the audio department. Mm -hmm. uh, through the live stream ringer. Yay. Yay. Bye guys! Bye everybody! Bye. Bye. Bye.